special episode of Your Space with your host Hannah Arunute. Please do not forget to check us out on Twitter at Your Space Uganda. Now today we will be looking at a conversation, an inspirational conversation with the one and only Dr. Maggie Chigozi. How can we as the young people be able to have a winning mind and a forward thinking mentality? Let's get into her story. I hope you get inspired. Are you a leader? You are here, which means you are learning to be a leader. Continue to be a leader. How do you do that? You have to have somebody following you. How can you call yourself a leader? I'm doing leadership course. Meanwhile, nobody listens to you. Nobody cares where you are. Being a leader means some people want to know what you think. They want to know where you're going. Yeah, that is leadership. So. Try and stand up and appear in the company. And how do you do that? Be useful to the others. Simple. They have a question, where is this? May have been here 10 years, you, you have just come. I can answer all your questions. And then after that is me. Whenever you're looking for something, you're looking for me. And the management will notice that. And they will employ you and give you a leadership position. We need to communicate better. You need to be dependable totally. And I think IGG took you through that. So you need to be ethical. You need to be dependable. You steal 10,000 shillings and your reputation is gone forever. Everybody will worry whenever there's money near you. So be careful. Be careful. Don't appear to be the one who's, who's corrupt. Um, you need, as a job, in your job, can you worry about your social security? I know you're very, very young, but you need to start thinking early. Can you, if you're paying NSSF, great. Your company is paying for you as well. If not, can you think of saving, some way of saving, buying a bond, whatever. But remember, you never know what's going to happen next week. Um, now, my type of people, after you've all got this fantastic job, or even during this fantastic job, who wants to start a business? Yeah, yeah. Business is actually not optional. These jobs that you all well, love, they actually end. Three years down the road, whatever you were doing, whatever ideation, oh no, ideation belongs to her, she's the founder. But some, she's at PSFU, that job can end, right? It ends. And then, so business, I mean, uh, business is actually not optional. All of you, those who didn't put up your hand, please put up your hand and start thinking about it. What business can you do? We heard about how Honorable started with his 120,000. You see, he managed to start. Think. I know Innocent does some wonderful things in ICT, innovation. Think. Yeah? I am a basic things like farming. You can grow a few things. So, let's begin to look at a side hustle. While you're still at work, Please don't leave your job. Just because you've got 120,000 and you started, and yet you had a nice job. Keep your job. <laughs> leave your job when you're ready to leave it, when your business starts making money. Because new businesses generally do not make much money. You're still investing everything you make. So if you can possibly continue with your job and Appear very good at the company. Don't appear distracted with your company, with your own business. So be very good so that they don't fire you. You need that money. That salary is important to you, to your family. Okay? So don't lose your job until you are ready. Now my business is running well. I can say goodbye. And if you want to abuse the general manager today, go ahead. Because I would, I would not advise that, though. It may be that his company will buy from you. So abusing anybody is, is a no-no. Is a no. Even however angry you've been all this time. Okay? So begin to look at investment. What can you invest in? 
Family business can be inherited. Is any member of your family, does they, do they have a business? Does your father, however small, now that your father educated you, I want you to go back to his business and make it bigger. Advice. Advice and make suggestions, okay? So family business, what do we do? We, we get shares. When an adult dies and leaves a piece of land, don't cut it up. You can do something on it together as a family. The Madhuvanis, the, the Indians do that all the time. The Ethiopians, the Eritreans. It's only us, Uganda, we are so individualistic. You want to do your own thing. You don't, you don't trust anybody. I think we need to learn to, we need to change because you can't. I was lucky. In our business, we are three owners of Pepsi Cola. Uh, we are very different. I think I'm the only graduate, but uh, they've been in business a lot longer, my two partners. One, Mr. Nzei, is very entrepreneurial. He has a new idea every day. Let's do this, no, let's go there, let's build that. Let's, uh, so that's one of our partners. Entrepreneurship, good, entrepreneurial, good but can lead you into problems. If you're not careful, then my other partner is over careful. No, no, we are not going to do that. Show me how it will succeed. You know, he's that type of person. I come in somewhere in the middle, I listen this side, I listen that side, and we make decisions. And we've just, we have a new plant on Entebbe Road. We have 75% market share. Uh, your friend, the one you're drinking, has 25%. Let me just stress that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Sabla <laughs> has 25%, and we've just gone to Kenya. Yeah, we're the first Ugandan company taking over Pepsi in Kenya. Going to be a challenge, a lot of, uh, it's worrying, but anyway, there we are. The entrepreneurial one is winning. Let's go, let's go, let's go. The other one saying, no, 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 no. And yes, we have gone. So what should you invest in? What should you invest in? Uganda is a land of opportunity. Many of you have not traveled. Those of us who have traveled can tell you there's nowhere else like Uganda. There's no country that has rain the whole year round. Yeah? None. There's no greenness like you see here. You, you go to Dubai, you will, yeah, you'll see the beautiful high sky rise houses, but the sand, every flower has, it has to be, you know, really get, get irrigated all the time. So we have beautiful land, we have beautiful climate, we have very educated people. We now have 67 universities. Makerel alone, I, I, I sit on the Makerel Endowment Fund, and last week, we graduated 12,700 people, students. UCU is doing the same. I've just come from Pentecostal University in, Umbara, in Fort Porto, about 600. So that's how educated our people are. So if you're starting a business, you will find among the young people, like the ones in this room, somebody with the skills, okay? It's not a problem. We're also very friendly. I say that we are friendly, but we are also very gloomy. We need to change that. We have for tourism, wildlife, life, we have beautiful culture. So starting your business, his sister gave him 120,000. Do you have somebody like that? I know Ugandans are not equal. So sometimes when you say that, some group is very angry. Where are we supposed to get that money from? So everybody not poor in Uganda, so somebody can give you 120,000, right? They paid your school fees here, so maybe they can still give you some startup capital. So, have you got any assets? Have you got a piece of land? Have you got a car? Have you got a computer? Now you don't even need the big computer. That, that one, the one that, uh, that you're all holding. You have a computer already. Those are all assets that can help you to run your business. But 
even as we talk about those assets, the most important asset for your business is you. You. You are thinking of running this thing. What do you know about it? What have you found out? What have you researched? Have you visited somebody who's doing the same thing? Make yourself the strongest asset for that business, the knowledgeable one. You don't need to hire the experts when you don't know. Some of them are not very good people. So you need to know. So do find out about your business. You people are young, you have plenty of time. Some of us maybe don't have that much time. And uh, look the part, depending on what you want to be a farmer, be comfortable in your t-shirts and jeans. You want to be a, you know, to start a bank or a circle or something, you may need to be, to dress the part. Learn to dress the part of what you want to do. Other assets, what other assets? In the family, is there a family built? Are there role models in your family or as friends, people you know? You need the knowledge, ask for it, look for it. You need the finance, that is a difficult one. That is a difficult one, but you can start the business small and grow. But in the meantime, since you're all planning to start by working, can you save something? Can you save something? I know it's hard. I know it's really, really hard. A small percentage of what you earn, keep it away for when you start your business. You will need it. If, uh, you know, we, one time I was very lucky that we had a, what is it called? Uh, we had NSSF, but we also had a company uh, fund that we were contributing to. And that came out every three years, you'd get something. That can really make a difference. Um, have you got a talent? Who's like Navio here? No one? No can't rap? Are you like Juliana? And you sing? I think we had the singer was on this table. <laughs> I don't know if she's going to do it professionally, but you never know. <laughs> yes, have you got a talent? Um, dancing, acting. Let me tell you about in Daily Center. Stephen is a good friend of mine. Well, I was at UIA, so every entrepreneur in Uganda is a good friend of mine. So Stephen wanted to start a dairy center, cultural center. So he put up a board in place of four people. He arranged a show. Now let me tell you about my generation. We used to like Congolese, and we used to like Hollywood, Michael Jackson and all those. We thought the British had brainwashed us. We thought our own culture was. Mm. So he held this show. He was starting his business. And the only people who came were the four who were his board members. Nobody else came. So that's where he started. But he didn't give up. Now, if you've been to Ntinda, who has seen the cultural center? Beautiful, beautiful accommodation, everything, food, everything. And that was talent, pure talent that he has and he was able to find among Ugandans. More recently, you see the ghetto kids. Where haven't they been if you watch TV? They are in the World Cup, they are, they are everywhere. Everybody wants a bit of them, the sheep friends. Social media is making them a big deal. Everybody wants our netball team because they are so cool. Okay, so talent, we have a lot of that and you can, you can make it a business. All these Eddie Kenzos, they make money. Navio, they make money, they live, okay? So, but what else do you need? You need entrepreneurship. Do you know how to run a business? I told you what happened to me when I went to Pepsi. Luckily, I knew that I had no skills. It was so obvious to even me, myself that I needed to get the skills. So get the skills. They're available in this university, they're available everywhere. And uh, then run your business. Know how to manage your finances, all that. So where are the opportunities? Opportunities are in trade. Honorable told you about his trading business, right? 
he was able to buy and sell. Trade, it is an opportunity. The family shop, if there is one, can you help your parents? Make it a big success. It's very difficult for you to learn it. I'll tell you a story about my friend, Agase Kalala Jr. His father has that big, big yuga chick. You know what yuga chick does. Chicken, chicken feed, everything, everything to do with chicken and fish. And it's really big, but he's a retirement age. He has a son. Do you know what the son likes? He has a disco. Do you know his disco? I always can't remember the name somewhere. So it's his talented on the other side, not chicken. Yes. But between the two of them, eventually they came to terms. Aga could find very good management for both his businesses. So the disc was running very well without him. The Simba radio is running very well without him. And he has gone and is taking over from his dad, that huge chicken thing that his father does. So, family business. How do we, if your parents, any of you, has a business, how do you come in? And I'm talking to you, but I need to talk to the parents. The young people tell me, these dads, they won't allow me to do anything. They won't allow me to make any decision. <laughs> so, we, we, we are also talking to the other side, with the parents. So that when your father dies, Starting a business is really, really hard. He started this thing from, you know, something as small as what Honorable told you, and now it's running and it has paid your school fees here. Help him, help him. Make it bigger, modernize, computerize. There are wonderful packages for SMEs, for business actually as a whole. Financial packages, Innocent knows more about them. Uh, I only use them. Um, you know, nowadays, our accounts are automatic. And uh, payments are automatic, you know. You don't even have to go line up in the bank. So it's beautiful. It's beautiful, and this you are capable of knowing. But your parents are not. So you have to bring it to them. So help them with the shop. The other opportunities, you are so educated. The services, the lawyers you will start all of you. I don't know how many of you, but there are so many lawyers around. You will start your professional offices, as will the doctors. They can open their clinics and their hospitals. They are everywhere, all over the country, and they are needed, okay? And uh, some of you can still go into service sector. Yeah, the service sectors include the innovation, the ICT, the innovation, the creative industry. All that is in the service sectors. Sports. Do you want to be like Chef Tege? He's a rich man. Of course, you have to be able to run. But, <laughs> but you've never tried. Maybe you can run. <laughs> Tennis, swimming, whatever. Those guys are rich. Uh, football. And now our netball girls are really, really. Our netball, our cricket, and even our football. We are getting up there to the top. Even swimming, we are getting to the top. We're coming. Took us a long time but we're getting there. Um, then health. Those of you like our MC today who are in the health sector, you can do anything. A hospital, a clinic, uh, whatever, physiotherapy, pharmacy, they have opportunities, private sector opportunities in all these. Education. In education, government gives UPE, USE, but actually they only cater for 30% of Ugandans. 70% are in the private sector. Start your business in education and you make money. You make money. You pray and let's all pray that COVID doesn't come back because that was a disaster for health, for education. But uh, yeah, it will, we, we pray it won't come back. The other sector is finance. People are starting little fintechs. I know probably you didn't touch on it. Uh, fintechs, they are giving services, they, they are giving you loans. My God, do they offer us loans by force? Take some money, <laughs> and then when it comes to wanting it back, pay me back now, tomorrow. You are not supposed to, you know. So I hope you can start one of those. 
and not be so mean about us paying back. <laughs> uh, tourism is the other one. Uganda, of course, we are blessed. We have all the wildlife. We have the snakes. We have the gorillas. We, we have it all. Where can you find your niche in this tourism that we have? People like local food. They might come to eat to know this is Shabwe and this is this and the other. Hello, I saw Kalo today, I think, on TV. Some Muzungus were enjoying their Kalo. So, a lot of opportunities in tourism. Of course, agriculture is our number one sector. Beautiful climate, beautiful soil, beautiful water. Not only rain, we have water all around. The lakes, the springs, and what have you. Um, so, I don't think I'll say too much about agriculture, but it is a sector that even urban agriculture, you can grow something around your house. It doesn't have to be huge. We have these ladies who show off their one acre or half an acre, and they have incredible things on it, a whole load of, of agricultural products. Uganda is blessed with minerals, and we are blessed our minerals are still in the ground. I think the government did it intentionally. They looked at minerals in Tanzania, which were being taken. Minerals in South Africa had already been taken. Minerals in Congo are being depleted. And we said ours, no. We don't have a single geologist in Uganda. Let's educate them first. So we sent, I, I like the way I'm saying we, the government sent um, many, many, many young people in various countries to learn about mining. They've come back. We are managing our petroleum industry. We are going to manage our oil. Uh, we have minerals. We have iron ore. We have cobalt. We, ha we have it all. We have it all. And it's still in the ground. So that's your job here, you guys. Be ready if you haven't trained in that sector. So oil and gas as well. And what you need, you need the skills, those little courses, but also the, the training that's being offered now in carpentry, in building, and I know you may have a degree, but if your business is going to include these things, maybe you need to also go for these very short courses during your holiday. In my primary eight, we used to do eight, you guys do seven, uh, eight holiday, I did secretarial course. And more, it opened doors for me. I was a secretary every holiday. I could get a big job because the secretaries would be wanting to go for Christmas. I'm a medical student. I do have a month at Christmas, and I would come and work in their office. They would call me. Because I had done those months, I was so bored. I was looking at my mother in where you get it and saying, Mom, I am just too bored. Can I go and do this course which I saw? Near the market in Kampala, some little business school belonging to India. So I did shorthand and typing, and it opened doors. Also, when I go to medical school, I could keep my notes in shorthand. While people were writing pages and pages, my notes were short. Anyway, skills. Get some skills. You are not busy now. Go. He has a lot to teach you. Go. Ideation Corner, they have a lot to teach you. Uh, go to these vocational colleges that government has put in place all over the country, and they are free, generally. Do you know how to do hair? I remember the girls who knew how to do hair would make their friends pay at the university. They would pay. They knew how to make dresses, beautiful dresses. Emma Negesa was fantastic. She made our clothes, and we paid her. So, start like that. You may want to do that. There are too many options, so we can't go into detail. But for your business, run it like a business. There's no business of I will sell or I won't sell or... No. You need a business plan. You need to do the research behind your business. You need to consider URA. Let not URA come to you four years later and say, God, you owe us millions and millions because you didn't pay the little amount you needed to pay over the years. Because you didn't know. Actually, you didn't pay because you didn't know. But you can't not know. You're running a business, and you are a tax money from business. Find where government supports you. 
because government does. The Uganda Investment Authority that I used to work for is always behind investors. Even SMEs, we have an SME division if you're going to start a small business. Don't forget about networking, which I talked about earlier. Don't forget about showing your products. Showing off in any way could be on social media. I have this, I have that, I have that. Who wants to buy it? It could be at the trade show. There are a large number. I think we are getting harvest money next weekend. What is it this weekend? Uh, so if you are in agriculture. So at the trade show, begin to, to show people what you have. And then good, get good customers, customer care. Be very good for your, to your customers so they'll come again. Yeah, you want, don't want to lose your customer. If you lose her, she'll also tell everybody in this room, don't ever go to that business. She's horrible or he's horrible, okay? So I think I'd better stop there. We've talked about you in a job. Be the best, be the best. And you can, you see, you has given you the skills to be the best. But on top of that, that's not permanent. The minute you leave that job, you go, they fire you or whatever, for whatever reason, they'll replace you and the company will continue running very well without you. So that's not, not a permanent thing, but your business is. Okay, thank you very much for listening. To well, that was one inspirational 30 minutes here on Your Space with your host, Hannah Arinitwe. If you want to get more of such entertainment, feel free to catch us again next week, same time, same place with your host, Hannah Arinitwe. Bye-bye.